miso salmon dish. Not very Peruvian, I know, but it definitely has some excellent combinations of flavors that I want to share with you. So if you don't have salmon, don't worry about it. That's what I found at the store today, but you can make it with mahi-mahi, cod, whatever fish you find. Just don't ever let that stop you from cooking. If you look at a cookbook or a TV show and they talk about a certain ingredient, whether it's turkey and you only have chicken, go ahead and make it. I don't know. But it should never stop you. You should always just go ahead and make it like that. So this dish we're going to serve with an edamame puree that I think you're really going to love. This is going to impress your friends and trust me, it isn't hard to make. So let's start by marinating the fish. So we have two pieces of salmon fillets here. If you have salmon steaks that will work too. If you don't have salmon and you have cod or mahi mahi, that works as well. Please don't let the type of fish uh, stop you from making the dish. I just happened to be at the store and there was salmon there and I just picked it up, right? So we have two servings right here, two generous servings. This, these are about six ounces uh, per piece, maybe even seven. You can do five, you can do four, depends on how much you like your fish, right? So we have a bowl here, we're gonna make the marinade, and the marinade is just about three ingredients. We have maple syrup, about one tablespoon, because we only have two fish. It would make no sense for me to make a cup of marinade when we only gotta do two pieces of fish. And then this is kind of a cool thing, it's miso paste. If you ever had miso soup, this is what flavors it. This happens to be a white miso paste, readily available at most supermarkets. Uh, adds a cool sort of umami flavor to all your cooking and uh, we're going to put about a teaspoon of that into our maple syrup and then we have uh, ginger. This is just uh, ground ginger or mixed uh, fresh ginger that we minced. We're going to add a teaspoon of that as well and then a little bit of salt. Mix this together. Make sure that the ginger gets the salt into the maple syrup and the miso. And a little bit more. And you can see that consistency. And we're gonna just pour this over our fish. It's a very flavorful marinade, so you don't need a lot. We're gonna make sure that the marinade hits all the pieces of fish. And then we're gonna flip our fish because the other side didn't do anything to you. And it also wants marinade. A little bit on one, a little bit on the other. And after we are done with that, we're going to put it in the ice box. It's not so old school, ice, ice box, right? So we're going to put it in the refrigerator and we're going to let it sit there for about an hour. And don't worry, we'll have other things to do. We're going to make our edamame puree next and uh, I'll see you then. So our Maple miso salmon is marinating in the refrigerator. We worked with fresh fish, so we sanitize all our station and we have some time. So we're gonna make our side dish. Our side dish is gonna be this cool edamame puree uh, or mash of edamame. We're gonna use a food processor, which is a great tool in the kitchen. It's uh, easier to work with on certain occasions than a blender. And our ingredients for this dish are gonna be shelled edamame. This has been steamed already. And you can find it either shelled or, or whole at a, the frozen section of your supermarket. If it's shelled, then you don't have to go through the step of getting it out. If, if you want to do it that way, you can. Then we have some regular uh, canola oil, sesame seed oil, soy sauce, ginger, a little bit of salt, maybe, maybe not. And then an ingredient that people just don't use enough, and it's basically free, water. So sometimes things are going to be too thick, and we tend to add more oil or more milk or more, sometimes all it needs is water. So don't forget about that. Water is an important ingredient on, uh, on your repertoire of cooking, right? So we have our uh, cuisine art here, or our food processor. We're gonna start with the edamame. This is about two cups of edamame, and that should give you enough for at least four servings. Then we're gonna add about a third of a cup of oil. This is the veggie oil. Uh, we're gonna add a good splash of soy. and some of the sesame seed oil 
And I'm not going to start with the salt yet. And I'm going to add equal parts of the oil to water. I'm going to put the top in here. And this always, always kind of tricks you. There's only one way in which it turns on. And I'm hoping it's this way. Yep. This comes together really quickly. So it should start looking like a green pea mash or a green potato mash. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and taste it and see if we're there with, uh, with uh, the salt levels and stuff. So I'm going to reach over here and get a spoon. Turn it off. Pop it open. Hmm. It does need a little bit of salt. And that's why you taste, right? And we're going to add a little bit more of regular oil, or the canola oil that we're using. And we're going to pulse it again. So good. And that's it. We have it done. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. We can set it at room temperature with our seared fish, or you can heat it up in a pan. Uh, today I'm going to do it room temperature. It's a hot day here in LA. Uh, but if it's a you know winter dish that you want to make, so you can just heat it in a pan. Bring it up to a, the, the, the temperature that you want, and that's going to be in the base of our dish. So I will see you guys back here when we're ready to sear, sear our fish. Our fish is almost ready to be done marinating, so we'll see you soon. Healthy food does not have to be boring. Why not just make it flavorful, right? So yeah. fish is ready to be cooked. We have our pan. This is a non-stick pan and uh, it's been heating up for a little bit. You know if it's hot if you put your hand close to the bottom of it and you feel the heat right away. So at this point we're going to add some of our oil. We have some just regular canola oil. Not a lot. You're going to move it around. We're going to do a quick sear on the salmon. If you feel like your pan is getting a little too hot like it was right now, just, just pull it off the fire for a little bit. Bring it back on. And then here's our salmon that was marinating. We're going to add it to it. Add it slow. That's the sound you want to hear when you're uh, searing something, right? This is a fish spatula. It's awesome. It's flexible and bendy. And it helps you get underneath the fish and flip it. The worst thing you can do when you're cooking fish is try to move it around too much. It will naturally separate itself from the fire when it's seared enough, right? So we're going to let it be for a second. Don't go in and try to move it if it's not moving for you. Just, just let it sear for another 30 seconds or so. The whole process is going to take about a minute and a half to two minutes on the first side and then about a minute on the other side. So see how I am wiggling it and it's okay to check. So we have a nice golden color in here and then we're going to flip. I'm putting my fingers in there and I'm flipping. And I'm moving the other one and I'm doing the same thing with the other one. Putting my fingers in there and flipping. Bring it back to the middle. In about 30 to 45 seconds, even a minute at the most, then this fish is gonna be ready. You can always feel the texture of your finished product by poking it without putting a lot of pressure onto the fish. If it's really like squishy still, it might need a little bit more time. This is almost there. And remember, your pan is nice and hot, so it's going to have a lot of carryover time. So I just went ahead and turned it off, and it's going to finish cooking with the heat that's remaining in there. So I'll see you in a second when we assemble this awesome dish. fish is nicely cooked uh, and we have all the elements for our plating, so let's do that. So remember how we started by, uh, well first we marinated the, marinated the fish and then uh, we made this awesome edamame puree which is here. I told you guys that if you want to you can heat it up, but we decided not to because it's a warm day out here. So we're going to put a dollop, I love that word dollop, right in the middle of the plate. That's not really a big enough dollop for me, so we're going to go with two dollops. And what we're doing here is we're creating a base 
to uh, land our fish in, right? So our fish is here, still sitting in the pan. Remember that the pan carries a good amount of heat, so if it's medium rare when you turn up the pan, it's probably going to be close to medium plus when you pull it up. So we're going to land the fish right in the middle there. And then um, we're going to make a quick little salad, or herb salad, I think they call it nowadays. But our herb salad is going to have a little arugula, and then we're going to throw some microgreens in there. If you don't have microgreens, remember, your life is not over. Just make it with whatever you have. You have spinach, you have chervil, you have parsley, you have whatever you have. Just make the dish. And then we have some radishes. Japanese mandolin, it's an awesome tool. It's also very dangerous. Uh, so you want to be careful with it. On the back, it has these dials. The one in the middle on the back is the one that uh, tells the machine how thick to cut things. So we have it on a pretty thin setting. Uh, if I keep going, we're going to have sliced fingers as, as well. So we just need a few of these thin, cool looking radishes. And actually, we're going to add them to our salad. So, so far, we have arugula, microgreens, and a few radishes. And then we made this uh, lemon dressing. It's just basically equal parts of lemon juice, good olive oil, salt and pepper. And we're gonna lightly dress this. So, you know, a little splash. Toss it. And then this part is where you wanna use your fingers. And don't do this an hour before you plate this. This is not something you wanna do before because they're such delicate greens that the lemon juice is gonna really cook them. So you don't wanna do that. And then I use my fingers because, I don't know if you can see, but I'm trying to create a little bit of height in the bowl before I land it on the plate. This is going to be in the middle of the plate like that. And uh, I happen to have a, an extra radish right here, so we just land it there. And the cool thing about plating like this is that you want to be able to see the fish, the puree, and the, and the green, or, or in this case, uh, herb salad, right? Here we have a little bit of balsamic and a, uh, a little bit of soy sauce and a little bit of chili paste that we reduced and we made this sauce from it. It's optional, you don't have to, there's a lot of flavor going on there, but we, can, we made it, we had the time, so I'm just going to come around and I just want to go around the plate. I don't want to go on to the fish. It's something that you can just kind of like pull away from your dish and then, uh, and then decide whether you want to or not. I have a little bit of this uh, lemon oil still, so I want to drizzle a little bit. I guess I can just do it like this, right on top of the fish. But I'm talking just like a little bit, and it's going to create this kind of cool sheen on your fish. Right? And you know, sometimes you want to keep going and overdress something, but I think we we are exactly where we need to be, and that is it. That's our maple miso salmon dish. Remember on the bottom there's this cool edamame puree and a little microgreen herb salad on top. Thank you again for, for spending this time with me. My name is Chef Luis Sanchez and I will hope to see you back here at a seat at my table. Thanks. Bye-bye.